there is a torrential downpour where I'm at right now. And you'll probably hear that in the background along with the rain. So hopefully I don't lose power while I'm recording this video, but I wanted to speak about someone else that has been hired to work on a project at the Ripperverse. Now I'm covering as much Ripperverse news as I can. Obviously there's only so much I can cover. So there'll be other topics that I cover things that you may or may not be interested in, but they're things that I'm interested in. Like for instance, that, uh, submarine or submersible, uh, vessel that was lost, uh, looking for the Titanic and the implosion that happened. Very interesting story. I will probably cover that at some point. But right now, what I want to talk about is the Saska sisters. Now, these are two sisters that have been hired by the Ripperverse to write Yaira number one. Now, I was not 100 <clears throat> percent, excuse me, familiar with the Saska sisters before this. There's much in comic books that I don't keep up with. Because I am very particular about my taste in comics, as you can see from all my Batman gear. I'm a Batman fan. I'm a Marvel guy, but a Batman fan. I know. It is what it is. I love Batman. He's one of my favorite heroes. But Marvel is my universe of choice. Now, for a good time, it was Image Comics. And Image Comics kind of fell apart. Uh, not fell apart in the sense that they went away, but the cohesive... A universe that they built within their respective independent studios that made up um, Image Comics, they kind of went away, went by the wayside. Image is still around, still doing good, but not what it was. So I didn't know much about the Saska sisters, so I decided to look them up. And I'm going to explain why I have chosen the websites I have specifically chosen to cover these two sisters, uh, these two sisters and the website I use to cover Chuck Dixon. If you notice, I used CBR to cover Chuck Dixon. Here's the reason why I'm using bleeding cool for Saska sisters. These websites do not cover <clears throat> anything Ripperverse, which is strange because the Ripperverse is the, in my humble opinion, the most exciting thing going on in comic books right now i don't know of of too many things that are more exciting than the ripperverse i know batman spawn came out a few months ago i bought that it was great um i did not know it was going to be a one-off and they kind of left you on a cliffhanger so i hope that they actually continue that book because it was actually good like i really enjoyed it so i want to talk about the saska sisters these sites don't cover the Ripperverse, but they have covered these other people. Here's what's going to happen. Almost by default, people who maybe enjoy the Saska sisters and people who maybe enjoy Chuck Dixon, they're going to find out about the Ripperverse because when you enjoy somebody, you look into everything they've worked on. Um, I've done this with all of of my favorite comic book artists and writers i look into them I, I get very excited about the the different things they've worked on one of a uh, uh, comic book artists i really enjoy is ken lashley he is an amazing artist that i i think i believe he's from canada he does not get enough respect but when i enjoy artists like that i'll look them up and i'll see everything they worked on because whatever they worked on, I'm typically interested in because if I'm either interested in their writing or interested in their art, then I'm going to want to see that thing that they worked on. So the Saska sisters, who are they? Right. I'm going to go over that a little bit because I am not 100 percent familiar with them, but they are well known within the comic book industry which means this is going to be a big deal for the Ripperverse and more people will more than likely find out about this new comic book venture. And some people may be interested. Some may not be interested. That is just the nature of life. So we're going to get into 
what who the Saskia sisters are first. I'm on uh, ripperverse.com and we're just going to go over and cover, excuse me, I kind of clicked over, go over and cover who, who they are and what the Ripperverse has to say about them and their involvement and what Eric July has going on. Okay. Uh, three, uh, Uh, Three books were promised as part of our 2023 release late. And uh, the same thing was said in the the Chuck Dixon section of the Ripperverse webpage. Uh, He said, I, some number two was always going to be the next project. Then last week we teased the book that would follow uh, the three part uh, ill advised uh, or the three. Uh, the ill-advised excuse me part two with alpha core number one uh this fall by the legendary chuck dixon excuse my terrible reading i'm I'm just not paying attention right now but what would come after that if you follow us on social media platforms and youtube and the youtube channel then you saw yesterday's incredible ripperverse news the, the Twisted Twins, known as the Saska Sisters, have joined the Ripperverse to write Yara Number 1. Now, from what I understand, they've worked on a lot of uh, horror, more horror-based books. And I don't know if that's uh, the direction uh, that Eric July is going with Yara. I'm not sure that that's why he chose them, but... They are respected writers. Um, and I want to go to this article actually uh, from Bleeding Cool about the Saska sisters. Because as I said, I didn't know really anything about them. Um, I, I believe I had heard Eric July mention their name uh, at one point in the past. But me personally, I didn't know about them. So I was like, all right, I need to figure out who they are. Because from what he's saying, it sounds like they're a big deal. Lo and behold, they are a pretty big deal. Uh, This is from 2018. Black Widow returns in new series from Saska Sisters and Flaviano from uh, New York City's uh, Women of Marvel. So it says Black Widow is returning in a new series this January just announced at the Woman of Marvel panel at New York Comic-Con. Bleeding Cool's uh, Medellin uh, Ruciato, excuse me if I annihilated that name, was on the scene at the panel telling us that the series will be written by the Saska sisters with Flaviano uh, providing the art. Surprise, we brought back a dead character we never do that, joked Marvel executive uh, Sana Aminet, and so they have. You know that, that I'm I'm not. I know some people really get upset with you know killing off characters and bringing characters back. It does get kind of old, but I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I get it. You get stale, and you want to create something that's going to bring some kind of excitement. And what do you do? You bring back a character that you killed and maybe had no intention of bringing it back. Maybe you did have some intention of bringing it back, but I, but I understand, you know, I, I get it. You're trying to do whatever you can do, uh, to generate clicks and views, uh, and to generate, um, an audience that will buy, uh, your stuff. So I get it. I understand. But the Saska sisters, not a small thing. Not a small thing, even if they were not a huge staple uh, in comic books, which they appear to be as far as their writing. The fact that they have worked with Marvel and other and some other companies, because I, I looked into them before this and now they're working with the Ripperverse. I don't think I don't think people who have been in the industry for any length of time would just randomly work with Eric July for no reason at all if they didn't think that this venture was serious and that there was a general, a a genuine audience for said book or said entity, 
I think they understand that there's an audience for this. If you're a writer, you want to go where the audience is. You want your stuff to be in the places that people are going to see. And clearly, and again, in my humble opinion, both Chuck Dixon and the Saska sisters believe that eyeballs are going to be on the Ripperverse seeing what's going on. And I agree. Um, I, I think for a person that could set aside whatever, and I've said this before, whatever disagreements or whatever, you know, quirky things about Eric July, they may not like. I think if you objectively sit down and look at I some number one is a brand new venture, brand new writer, brand new company. Uh, this is not something that's established. There's no backers. Yo, this was, this was not bad. This was not bad at all. Uh, imagine you decided you were going to start. I'm, I'm trying to think of what, what I can bring up a brewing company. I know nothing about drinking. I don't drink at all. Just not my thing. Never have been, but imagine, Oh, that was a big one. Imagine you started a brewing company. You don't know anything about brewing, but you are a connoisseur of fine beer. So you decide I'm going to start a brewing company. I'm going to brew my own beer. You, you do your research, you do your due diligence, you get everything you need and you create your first, uh, what do they call it? IPA. I'm, I don't know anything about beer, so you can correct me in the comments and let's say it comes out and it's not the most perfect beer people have ever tasted by any means, but they're like, yo, this is good. It's not perfect. There's stuff that's missing. There's stuff you need, but this is genuinely good. I think people would understand, yo, this is not perfect, but the fact that you were able to make something good. Yeah. I'm coming back to see what you do next because there's potential here. And I think people are watching. I think people in the industry even are watching. They may not say it. They may not vocalize it, but I think there are creatives across the comic book space that are watching the things going on with Eric July and the Ripperverse. And I think they are taking note and I think he'll bring on more names. I think there are people that are just independently minded that minded that don't care about all of the peripheral issues, right, left, center, doesn't matter. They just want to create good art. And I think he's going to attract a lot of those people. I think they're going to come. I think the fans are going to support it. I think haters are going to hate no matter what. Um, as I said before, there are things about Marvel and DC I don't like as far as management styles, books sometimes. Sometimes the direction of some of the stories, some of the art, not a huge fan. But I don't hate Marvel or DC because... They've done some things I don't like. I'm one person. I understand that there's no way they're going to please everyone. Now, for whatever reason, they've built up a track record as of late of almost not pleasing uh, all of their core fans. Now, I'm not going to say they don't please anyone. That would be a stretch. I don't know that. And I don't I don't really think that. I think there are people that are pleased with some of the things they do that most people don't like. And then there's a lot of people that are like, yo, I am not rocking with this at all, but it is what it is. They're a company that will have wins and they will have losses. I don't think uh, the Ripperverse will be free from that. I think they will have wins. They will have losses. There will be things people like. There will be things people don't like. But the one thing you have to recognize is he's doing numbers and he is bringing in some big names. And I think whether they want to admit it or not, the industry at some point, even though they're mums the word on the, on the mainstream, they might, you know, you might have some people here and there getting at him on Twitter and you might have some petty internet beefs, but at some point they're going to be forced to take notice publicly. I believe it's only a matter of time.